by me? Why have they chosen to torment me every single day? You're exaggerating it. Look, you're having a bad day. It's the time of your month. You need to toughen up and grow up. You don't, it's not that bad. You don't need to be like this. No! How would you like it if they called you a mother and slut? If they called you an abortion? If they threw your lunch over the floor and made you pick it up and eat it? Then, would you still say it's not that bad? Okay. So, they're stupid. I know maybe about it. Oh, and there it is. There's the reason why you get so much hassle. You know what, Freya? Sometimes you could just be such an arrogant prick. Well, okay, so you come across so clever that you make all of us look stupid. I mean, you're even good at sports. You look at sports. Just people I don't do well with. Well, you get on with me and Tyler, and I think we're people. So you say? Look, Jenny, I just want it all to end. Tell me what to do. I wish I knew. Look, the break's almost over and we've got drama next. Oh, and um, Mr. Harvey said he's got some big announcements to make. Hopefully he's leaving. I can't wait to see the back of that coat. What do you mean? It's very good of you to invite me to tea, Mr. Dawson. But I'm not sure about the propriety of me being here alone in your room. I mean, what if the Dean was to find out? I think you'll find that I'm not a man for propriety. I'm not bound by society's rules. I follow a higher power. Oh, you mean God, I assume. I mean duty, which may, of course, be the same thing. But I can assure you that I do value innocence and would never knowingly cause anyone to stumble. I hope you can find that of some. Some, Mr. Dodson, but you do know what they say about you around college. I couldn't possibly. What do they say about me around college, Eleanor? Well, it's about your photographs. You do take a lot of photographs, and some might be deemed, I'm not sure of the right word to use here, indecent, perhaps. Never. Never in all of my days have I taken a photograph that could have been considered indecent. I try to capture man before the fall. The image of man before sin crept in. We all must fall, Eleanor, eventually. It's part of growing up. I suppose that's all your theological talk. Well, I don't understand any of it. All I know is that the man I'm sitting with today is a little eccentric, but wonderfully kind. And I couldn't ask for a better companion now or in the future. You are too kind. <laughs> now, how are those charges of yours? Are you still managing to keep them under your control? Almost, but they are children and full of life, and sometimes life just gets a little too... <laughs> too lively. Exactly. And who is the main culprit? <laughs> Why, that is easy. It's Alice. It's always Alice. <laughs> it's always Alice. You're probably ruining her life. She could be self-harming for it right now for all you know. Not her. She wouldn't have the bottle. Anyway, what have we for you? Some kind of fancy girl. Oh, don't worry, Jenny. It's only you it is. I've got to go. I'll see you guys later. Are you all done with you? Don't be responsible, please. No one's ever seen him really. But it's likely he's just a nice guy. Though I'm not sure I believe he's a nice guy. There he is. I'm going to audition. I'm not stupid. I can't find you in the team. Well, I'll audition for a bit of a bully.
happy while you are. Why would I ever want to talk about you? You have to be really bored. I bet you think you're really funny. Funny and ugly, the perfect combination. Do you ever talk anything in utter crap, Alison? Guess not. We have too much for your tiny mind to handle. Girls, what's going on here? Nothing, Nothing miss. miss. Well, I hope you can get outside then, please. It's break time. Alison, can I have a word? What? I didn't do anything. And I didn't say you did. I was just wondering if you're going to audition for Alice in Wonderland. Why? Because I thought being in a school production would do you some good. I've seen you in drama. You're a talented actor. Well, that clearly you are, but I might audition. Thanks, miss. for the rest of the day. I just want some peace, Tyler. Can't you go away? Of course I can. But I won't. Why do you do this, Freya? It's not as if Grace or Alison were saying anything. In fact, they aren't as bad as they were. I think Jane's the problem. It's not them. But they are still just as bad. It's everything, Tyler. Life. I don't understand how you are the way you are. Why do you scream, shout, fight, anything? Instead, you're just nice. It's what I choose to be. You're on the campus one day. I wish things were easier at home. I wish I had money and nice clothes and could go on holiday. But that's not going to happen. These are the cards I bring out. So I'm going to make nice of them. I'm going to have some quiet and change everything. And besides, I'm not going to let life beat me. And neither should you. So, you come in. Ah, let me show you one of the tricks I have been learning. I have been learning the most marvellous illusions with cards. Very well, Charles. Okay, so first off, pick a card, any card. Make, <coughs> make sure you remember which one it is. Yes, I have it. Place it back in the deck wherever you please. Okay, I shall now shuffle the cards as so. There we go. Would you like to shuffle them as well, Thomas? Why not, Dodson? I'd make it too easy on you. Of course, of course. Let me see. Wonderful. That should do nicely. Now, I'm afraid my memory. Oh, what day of the month were you, were you born on again, Thomas? It escapes me. Come, come, Dobson. You know as well as I was the ninth. <laughs> yes, indeed, it was the ninth. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Was this your card? I say, Charles. <laughs> Damned if that's not it. That's really rather good. <laughs> Time for another one. Yes, why not? Very good. Now, you have seen this is clearly a normal. Yes, Seems normal good. enough. Very good. Now, we have here this, at the top the Ace of Hearts. We have no way of knowing what is there at the back. But I'm going to predict that I, by nearly just twisting around at the back, will be able to show you what the new card will be at the back. So I'm going to predict it will be the Nine of Hearts. Okay, ready? So I'm just basically going to put it forward, like so. And there we have the Nine of Hearts. <laughs> I do it again? <laughs> Why not one more? Very well, next will be the Eight of Hearts. Here we go. Put it forward, on the back, and here we are. <laughs> Eight of Shall we do one more? I think that's enough, oh, Charles. Well. <laughs> Since when do card tricks form part of your role as theology tutor or librarian? I mean, I've seen these things done at children's parties. Isn't all this a little bit beneath you? I mean, who are you trying to impress? Surely not the divine Eleanor. She would marry you tomorrow if you were to ask. She is magnificently impressed with the prospect of being Mrs. Charles Dodson. I have no interest in marrying Eleanor, at least not immediately. <laughs> Sometimes I find her to be somewhat... What's the word I'm looking for? Clinging, suffocating, 
Desperate? Yes, all of those and probably more. <laughs> oh, but she is such a sweet one to look at, don't you think? Quite childlike. And she is such an innocent. One can't help but like her very much. Well, if you say so, Charles. Personally, I find her insufferable. <laughs> but I do confess I find her very pretty. A kiss beneath the mistletoe at Christmas would be a most pleasant affair, I should imagine. I presume you both have kissed by now. You have been courting the girl for at least three months. We kissed at the end of our first evening together. I think I took her by surprise. She called me forward. <laughs> but she was not offended. And we have kissed many times since. Oh, I'll bet you have. You are a most <laughs> unconventional man, Dodson. And sometimes I worry about you. But you haven't answered my question. Who are these parlour tricks for, if not for Eleanor? Why, they are for her children. <laughs> I am to be entertainment at a party that she is organising. I have been learning new tricks and illusions almost daily in preparation for the great, the great event. I am looking forward to it immensely. In fact, I think I am looking forward to it more than anything else. Well, it's my view, Dodgson, that you need to get out more. <laughs> yes, I have been thinking the same thing. In fact, I thought I might take a trip on the river, on a boat. Would you be interested if I was to organise it? Certainly. I should like nothing better. As long as the weather is fine and the wind is slight, I am your man. Splendid. <laughs> oh, and Dodson, do you still indulge in your photographic hobby by any chance? Yes, why do you ask? I was wondering if you might do me a portrait. One that I can send home to my mother to show her what a fine young man I have become. She will frame it and hang it with pride above the mantelpiece and boast of me to all her visitors. Yes, yes, you tell me a date when you are free and we shall fix it up. <laughs> it will be the perfect opportunity to try out some of my new equipment. So you're not taking as many photographs as you used to? No, I cannot find the subjects. It's a tragic shame, but there it is. Miss Harvey, how did you just pray to place Alice is completely beyond me? She doesn't even look like Alice. She isn't even modern. I don't get why you're so upset. I mean, you got the part you wanted. It's a very good act. You'll be great as Alice. But I wanted to be Alice. Instead, I'm Cora, and that sucks. I don't think I'm going to do it at all now, because who wants to be Cora anyway? I'm um, Cora. Well, mostly. I've got a few parts of Cheshire Cat, but. I like being in the chorus. You get to meet loads of scenes, yet you have hardly any lines to learn. Yeah, but I want to be noticed, and I'm, I'm not going to be noticed I'm in the chorus. Oh, you'll be noticed, all right. You can't dance when you're always that stuff. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> Don't take it out of me just because you didn't get the part of Alice. Sorry, it was me. I was just getting into my character as a queen, you know? No offence, Ben. Yeah, no, I'm taken. So, Tom, it'll be you and me dancing in the chorus together. I hardly doubt that, but you never know. And would you like that, Tom? Would you like to be dancing with Grace in the chorus? I might, but I can't say I'm revision all day. Homework and revision. It sucks having the performance right before exams. See ya. I think he fancies me. I think he's gay. Gay? Really? Are you sure? That'd be so unfair. Why would it be fair? Ask Tyler. You're a will. Because if anyone knows it'll be Tyler, because they're best friends, right? But you don't think him and Tyler are, are you for real? Of course I'm for real. What does she mean? Ignore them. They're being foolish. 
and you did an amazing job. Well, thank you, Frank. I think you're perfect as well. Mr. Harvey really loved you in the role. He told me so the other day. What exactly did he say? Oh, I can't remember. I just got the impression. What, you know, you can tell when someone. Are we going to get on with this or are we going to stand around gossiping? Okay, let's do this both. Right, Harvey, you're first. All right, we'll be here. I have my hand in the water, dream on.
I could have easily have stroked a lion as I stroked the college cat. <laughs> and furthermore, we all walked about completely naked and knew not shame. Mr. Dodgson, you can't put an image like that in a young girl's head. Why ever not? It is in the scriptures. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. And though the man and woman were naked, they were not ashamed. You see, when God made man and woman, he created them innocent. And their innocence was shown in their lack of shame for being without clothes. It is innocence that we have lost. Sometimes we are lucky enough to see it in the glimpse of the eyes of a child. But for the most part, it is gone. And we are the poorer for it. Sometimes, Charles, I think you talk utter nonsense. Are you suggesting that it would be a better world if we were to all walk around without our clothes on? I, for one, would find the whole thing utterly disgraceful, not to mention how impractical that would be. I don't think you understand what it is I am saying. I'm not advocating a return to naturism, more what our nakedness represents. Innocence. A time when we did not know right from wrong, because there was nothing wrong in the whole world. Eve has a lot to answer for. But it was Adam who took the apple first, so maybe the fault lay with him for being too weak or too eager to become like God. My dear Eleanor, I do think you have the makings of a theologian. <laughs> now, would you like to take a trip with me on the river in a boat? My friend Godstone is always saying I should get out more, so I thought... What we'd... a lovely idea. Who would be our chaperone? Thomas? Yes. He could share in some of the rowing. And I thought perhaps your children might want to join us. Oh, the young girls and Henry. Yes, perhaps not young Henry. He might be a little too young. Too overexcitable. <laughs> Man overboard, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. I shall ask Mrs. Little. I'm sure she won't mind. Then it is settled. Oh. <coughs> Eleanor was just leaving. I was talking to her about our boat trip. I thought we might go for next weekend. Mr. Godstone, how lovely to see you. I am very much looking forward to our little outing. And for now, goodbye, Charles. Oh. <coughs> I say, Dodgson, did you really have to kiss like that in front of me? It was damned embarrassing for both of us. Well, I thought as we were always going on about my love life, you might want to see it in action, so to speak. <laughs> no, no. Well, take a seat. What can I do for you all? No, thank you. I just wanted to confirm the details for next weekend, that's all, as I'll be away for most of the week. So it's just you, me and Eleanor, is it? And the children. The three girls. Ah, the three girls, of course. The littles, you mean. Well, that will make for a most pleasant trip. Not without its dangers, of course. Dangers? You mean they might fall in? Well, yes. There is that, of course. <laughs> what else, Thomas? What are you implying? Oh, nothing. I've just been listening to too much gossip. Are you planning to keep them entertained with your party tricks? <laughs> no. I, I thought I might rather tell them a story.
so, what have you been writing about today? Today I have written that I have become excellent friends with three most lovely young ladies. I mark today with a white stone, such as its significance. What a strange way you have of talking, Dodson. <laughs> I'll tell you what I thought was significant about today. That story you spun. Marvellous. It was exciting and fantastic, and I really think you should write it down. I'm not sure who enjoyed it most, me or the girls. <laughs> not Eleanor, then. She seemed quite happy, though I caught her eyes drooping once or twice. Ah, it was a hot day. <laughs> so what do you say? Will you write it down? I'm not exaggerating when I say I think you have a bestseller on your hands. It will appeal to adults and children alike. It will make you famous. Hmm, I rather think that an Oxford tutor should be known for his, his studying, his original thoughts. Not some childlike story. I, I told it for the girls. You told the story for Alice. It was certainly Alice you were telling it to. You barely looked at the others. Ah. She'll be a real beauty once she's all grown up. Pity children have to grow up, don't you think? We all have to. Time demands it. Society demands it. If we remain children all our life, nothing would ever get done. It would be chaos. It could just as easily be paradise. Write the book, get it out of your system, and then return to your mathematics. Yes, well, maybe I will. Alice asked me to as well. She gave me a lock of her hair. I shall treasure it. Alongside your lock of Eleanor's hair, no doubt. I am not fortunate enough to possess such a thing. <laughs> you are. No, I, I never. But you asked Alice. I overheard you. Oh, it just won't do, you know. What won't do? The way you carry on with these girls, and not just the little girls. It's as if you prefer their company to adults. Oh, I do. <laughs> Children are three quarters of my life. When I am with them, God is in his heaven. It's as if nothing could ever go wrong. It's really rather beautiful. Can't you see that? I understand that that is how you feel. I am less convinced that the Dean would understand if he ever got to hear about... if he ever got to hear what other people are saying. Are you saying I should take a step back? I am saying you should be careful. God knows there isn't an ounce of harm in you. Look, you live your life as if you're still living your childhood. But out there, people think differently. They are less prepared to give you the benefit of the doubt. No one believes in innocence anymore. Do you understand Yes, that? yes. But I think you are wrong. Shall we change the subject? You never did give me a date that you were free for your photograph. How about Friday? That would be wonderful. See you then. Take care, Charles. I shall tell her on Monday, and then speak to her parents. That should put an end to all of the gossip. Say 
all of the actual performance, okay? This is going to be so great, I hope so. No old ones, really old ones. Did you get them from a charity shop? I love buying things from a charity shop. I'm not proud. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, okay. <coughs> okay. I guess. So, still holding in that big secret? No, I told you about Alison and Graves. Yeah, you did, and it got better, but that's not what he, that's not what's eating you up. Why can't you just tell the truth, Freya? It's nothing honest. Nothing I can tell you about anyway. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. We had no secrets. Now look at you, you're on a locked door. I, I don't even know who you are anymore. You've changed. Why, Freya? Don't ask. That's all I ask. Don't ask. If that's what you want.
She doesn't understand, Mr. Dorsham. She is a child. Her head is filled with stories, many of which you have placed there yourself. She dreams, she hopes, she aspires to love. And you bring it all crashing down on her head with your perverse declaration. I am not perverse. I think it is perfectly natural for someone to love a child without any thoughts of, of sex or anything like that. Stop! Please, still let me explain. I see in Alice, Eve before the fall, a child as, as God intended, the perfect woman. And she is my friend, my only friend. Of course, I like her sisters also, but Alice is my life, my, my love, my joy. And I cannot live without her. Why, in, in three years' time, she'll be 14 and, and free to marry. Mac, are you insane? Now, you listen to me, Mr. Dodgson. You will not see Alice ever again. You will not speak to her. You will avoid all contact with her. And if you do not, I will bring the full force of the law and the church upon your sick and fevered brain. Marry her. God, what must Eleanor think? That poor girl. I will tell her everything. Everything. She deserves to know. I will tell my husband also. I will ruin you, Mr. Dodgson. I will not rest until your name is despised and the very thought of you causes all right-thinking people to feel sick. Am I clear? Yes. Am I clear, Mr. Dodgson? I didn't quite hear you. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Little, you've been quite clear. You have killed me with your words and your threats. To be deprived of the companionship of Alice is like death to me. Good. I hope you die and your soul finds no rest. Now I will leave you and we will not meet again. Sending out signals the whole time. I get it. This way you were like Lily. Before she broke up with you. Lily was a slut. Lily's not a slut. Be careful, Grace. Don't get me mad. It's not gonna hurt. You're gonna like this, I promise. Get your hands off the top! You said perm and that's rape! You just tried to frame my mate! God knows what you did to poor Millie! You know what I'm gonna do, Tom? I'm gonna get out of here with my mate Grace and we're gonna report you to the hen. You're gonna go to jail. I hope you rot. Just leave her. I couldn't bear 
to dress and undress my girls. Good God, what kind of a governess are you? Do you realise what your carelessness is allowed to happen? I will see to it that you never have a position again. You have robbed my girls of their childhood. You have allowed them to be corrupted and spoiled. He is an evil man, but you are a wicked woman. No, Mrs. Little, I think you're wrong. Charles loves children. It's as simple as that. He likes their simple ways, their trust, their love to that of adults. I understand him, even though you feel he has betrayed you. I have betrayed myself. I was convinced he was in love with me and acted my life as if it was so. I am a sad creature, Mrs. Little, but not a wicked one. Are you asking me to forgive you? To I give you a second chance? No, I am asking you don't think the worst of either me or Charles. And will you continue to see him? No, not now, I see it clear. We are finished. Very well, that is something, I suppose. You must write to him at once. I have forbidden the girls to speak of him ever again. Have you told your husband? Not yet. I will, but can be so frustrating at times. He always believes the best in people. And that comes with being a clergyman, I suppose. I suppose it is a weakness in men that they fail to see the darkness that hides behind their fraternity and civility. Whereas we look for it. Perhaps, perhaps we do. Thank you, Eleanor, that will be all for now. Consider yourself on trial. Thank you, Mum. Alison, it's not like you to be on your own. Is everything all right? I guess. No, Grace, I thought you two were inseparable. We had a disagreement over a boy. Yes. Over a boy, but not in the way that you think. What do you mean? Nothing. Never mind. Okay. So, you know, are there friends? <laughs> Look at me. What do you think? Everybody hates me. No, they don't. Not really. Some are a little scared, perhaps, but you have a reputation. I know. I know it's my fault, but I can't help who I am. Of course you can. You're in control of your own life, even if you are tempted. Tis one thing to be tempted, tis another to fall. Come on, don't wash Shakespeare on me. It was Shakespeare, measure for measure. Seriously, you're in charge of what you do. No matter how you feel, you choose how to react. It's not easy, I know. I'm right, it's not easy. Anyways, why do you care? A few years ago, it was me sitting on my own. I wouldn't like to think 
it's all going to be the same thing I did. Don't put two leaves. I couldn't stand that. That's pity, Alison. Don't mistake someone caring for pity. It'd be tragic. Yeah. <coughs> if you say so. Still sounds like pity, whatever you say. The thing is, haven't you got things to do? Lessons to plan and all that? No, not really. Well, of course, but I'm in no hurry. Pity. So does that mean you're staying? Do you want me to? No, of course not. Well, if you really haven't got anywhere else to go. Oh, yes, right. Okay. So, I'm just going to go and prepare the room for your photograph. Uh, feel free to take a seat and get yourself a smoke or a drink. Thank you, Charles. Right, thank you. You have a letter, Charles? Smells like a woman. Open it and read it to me, will you? Are you serious? Can't open your mail. Could be a love letter. That will be damned embarrassing. <laughs> we have no secrets, you and I. Besides, it's probably Eleanor begging me to take her to the theatre or declaring her love for me in some awfully poetic fashion. <laughs> Go on, open it and read it to me. If I must. <clears throat> Dear Charles, I have spoken with Mrs. Little. I know what you have done. I know how you have used me these past six months. I understand. I truly do. But knowing the truth does mean it would be pointless continuing. I had hoped to become your wife. I dreamed of having children of my own. Your children, Charles. But I don't think you will ever be a father. I think the thought that a child of yours would grow up would kill you. You have behaved very badly to me and Mrs. Little. You have behaved worst of all to Alice, the sweetest little thing I have ever had the fortune to care for. Mrs. Little believes you have corrupted her. I believe you were forced to grow up far too quickly. You have robbed her of her childhood by showing her the adult world in all its brokenness and dirt. Your proposal showed her that Wonderland is just, and always will be, a dream. I know that these words will hurt you, but they are true nonetheless. I forgive you, and really do wish you happiness in your future, though I doubt that you will ever find it. Shall see neither me nor Alice again. Live well and be good. Your friend, Eleanor. Forced her to grow up too quickly. How dare she write such a thing? Eleanor has broken with you, Charles. What do you have to say to that? It is. It is a relief. She was a burden. A soft and gentle one, but. A burden nonetheless. There are days, Charles, when I wonder whether or not you truly are human. Do you have a heart? Yes. And it is broken. Whatever did you say to Alice? I told her that I loved her. I was going to propose. In three years we could have been married. Dobson, you shot me! You would have proposed marriage to a girl of eleven? Yes. I adore her. Dodson, do you realise what all this means? It's the end. You're finished. Guilty until proved innocent. How simple-minded of you. You know, the only person that has done anything wrong in this situation is that Haridan, denying one of God's universal rights, that to pure love. It is her that shall burn for this, not I. Charles, please, calm down. You're talking like a madman. You're right. I'm sorry. Forgive me. But please, tell me you understand. I think I do. At least partly. But I'm not sure anyone else will. 
This has nothing to do with sex. I'm relieved to hear that. Though I... Well, I think never perhaps thought. you did. Anyone that sees a man with a child thinks that somewhere deep down in their psyche is something burning, something evil, something unnatural that finds its expression in sex. It's true. No one trusts a man who likes children, least of all a clergyman. You go too far! I will not listen to you speak like this! Speak truth! Speak nonsense! The time is coming, my friend, and will soon be here when any man who pats a child on the back or ruffles their hair in a carefree gesture or spins them by the hands in a giddy arc will be abused, arrested, and for what? <laughs> for trying to show a child that they are loved, valued, protected, not all men think like you, Charles. Not all men are children. You know as well as I that just down the road from here there are fathers who beat their children. Fathers who will do unspeakable things to them. Fathers who see them as nothing more than an object on which they can heap their abominable abuses. For the sake of those, is it not better to think the worst of all men? Maybe. More the pity that anyone would think ill of me. Now, come on, your photograph. Yes, very well. Not your 
Dad. He's okay. I like him. Good God, is someone here? It is, isn't it? It's Mr. Harvey, isn't it? Just not. Freya, you've got to tell us. No, please, no. Oh, you're as bad as Grace. Look, if you don't say something, I will. Don't. I'm please. I'm sorry. I can't keep quiet on this. Alison! Is she bullying you again? No, no. She's been kind. Kind? Well, where has she gone now? We'll never get through this rehearsal. The whole thing's going to be a disaster. Now, Dodson said he'd left that photograph on the table. It's still hanging on one of his washing lines. Good grief. What an awful mess. How can he live like this? Ah, yes. Here it is. And I must say, Mr. Godstone, you are looking most handsome. Mother will be proud. Well, <coughs> what do we have here? Let me just hold it up to the light. like this. It's Ina, isn't it? The older girl. What is she? 14, 15? 14. This is, this is, it's pornographic. Ina, for God's sake, Charles. You know what this picture tells me? That I can lie to nude superbly well. How can you joke about this? You have taken a full-length photograph of a naked girl. Not a girl. A young woman, but still, this photograph tells me you are a liar and a devil. You protest your love of children. You avow to be their protector and the preserver of their innocence, and yet you produce this for whose use? It was private. Nina knew that I wanted to. Wanted to what? Wanted to see her like this. She said. She never did. Do not try and blame the woman. This is not some demonic twist on Eden. You stole the innocence. You wanted this. You made her do this. You are a fraud. Nothing to say for yourself. I'd like my photograph back, please. What? My photograph, please. This is evidence. What future do you think you have now once this gets out? Nothing you can say will excuse this, Charles. Nothing. My photograph. Here. Take it. Just promise me you'll burn it. Promise me, Charles. Never again. Never again. Promise me. You are a good friend, Solomon. I am not your friend. Do you promise? I promise. Good. I pity you, Charles. You could have been... I'm a publisher. My book. I took your advice. I'm going to call it Alice in Wonderland. Is that not something? Yes. Yes, it is something. But God knows quite what. There is no Wonderland, Charles. There is only this world and the hereafter. My hope is in heaven. I pray to God we will meet there. He will forgive me even if you do not. Are you sure of that? Really sure? <coughs> Goodbye, Charles. Do not try to contact me. The very sight of you seconds me now. Life 
couldn't get any worse. You're going to tell me that you haven't learned your lines just like everybody else. Actually, no, I'm not. I mean, I haven't learned my lines, but that's not what I was going to say. No. That makes sense. What were you going to say? Um, I don't think we should do this play. Why? And don't say it's because it's rubbish. We already know that. <laughs> not that rubbish. It is kind of rubbish, not that rubbish. <laughs> some research. Very enterprising of you, Tyler. Been looking at white rabbits and how they move, have you? Yeah, okay, no need to be sorry. I've been researching Lewis Carroll. He wasn't nice. He was a Catholic's children's author. What's not nice about that? Do you know that he was in love with Alice? Do you know that he, want, that he wanted to marry her? Do you know that he used to take pornographic pictures? He was sick. Is this true? Well, people who wrote to spit on this, but documentary on YouTube by the BBC that sent it down to paedophiles. Seriously? Alice is a wonderland. I never looked at the book the same way again. And Disney made a movie of it. Now do you see what I mean? I guess. Can I talk to Mr Harvey about it? I'll come with you. Thanks, Tyler. Not lately. Why not? Not really. It's private. Sorry. I'm sorry. Bye. Hi, Fred. Tyler. I need to talk to Grace. Alone. Alone. Okay. <laughs> Grace. Fred. I've been talking to Alison and Mr. I know better with Cynthia. I still go in for it. Something awful. Life, you mean? Yes, life and those who take it from us. What do you mean? Can I tell you something? About three months ago, I noticed that he, Mr. Harvey, he seemed to be looking at me a lot when I was working. So, don't all teachers? Yes, but not like this. He asked me to stay a while after lessons. He told me he thought I had amazing potential that I could make it if I really tried. I believed him. You should. Be good. Yes, I know. I know you think I'm being weak headed. I'm not. I'm good at drawing, but not that good. For a while. He made me believe it. He offered me extra tuition after school. So, you stayed? Who else knew? He asked me not to tell anyone. He said he didn't want anybody else thinking they had a right to his time when they were just mediocre at best. He made me feel special. Go on. We were doing a scene. Romeo and Juliet. As we finished, he kissed you. Yeah. <laughs> I was so shocked, I just stood there. He looked at me to see how I reacted. And he must have thought I was happy about it, so he kissed me again, and that was that. Why didn't you tell anyone? He told me I must have. He said it was just acting. I needed to immerse myself in the role. I believed him. But next time, I tried to stop. I tried. I told him I'd tell, but he said he'd believe me. Said it was all just acting. It wasn't real. But it was. It was real, Grace. And ever since, whenever he's been near me, he's touched me. Just little touches. As if to say he owned me. I'm so sorry, Tyler. And now you understand. If you talk about Tom, I feel I can talk about Mr. Harvey. It's a shame. I feel so ashamed. It's not our fault. 
The shame is theirs, not ours. I don't want it anymore, Grace. What do you say? You're the first one to speak to me tonight. I I've know, been... I've been watching you all evening. You shouldn't have come, you know. I don't see why not. The rest of the faculty... You can't understand, can you? We mere mortals are not like you, we judge. Ah. You as well. Especially me. Thomas told me about your latest indiscretion. I bet he did. And what are you going to do about it? He promised it would never happen again. That you burned any evidence. I asked Ina about it in a roundabout kind of way. She says I must be mistaken, that she never posed for any photographs with you on her own, that it must be a girl that looks just like her or something. A girl? Perhaps. And are you going to tell on me? Not I, nor Ina, nor Alice. We are all too shamed by this little episode. We'd rather forget it ever happened. We'd rather forget you. But you won't. My book has been published, I know. It caused quite a stir in the little household. Why, the dean says he hopes for a sequel, as does Alice. Then I shall write one straight away. I have no doubt that you will. But I shan't read it. I shan't read Alice in Wonderland. I was there when you first told that story. I know the truth of things. Then you shan't be asking me for a signed copy. I shan't ask you for anything ever again, Mr. Dalton. Goodbye. You're leaving. Good. That's sensible. I'm always sensible, Mrs. Little. Always. Your problem is you never have been. Insensible, perhaps. Perhaps. Did Alice get my copy of the book? I dedicated it to her. So I saw. That was most irresponsible of you. Selfish and arrogant. Did she read it? She did. She said she preferred it the first time you told it. But she did like the illustrations, which, thank God, bear no resemblance. Yes, well, stories are made for telling. I'm thinking of writing a sequel. Have you no shame? Do you ever look in the mirror and see yourself for the monster you truly are? I never look into the looking glass, Mrs. Diddle, for fear of what I might find there. Then maybe you should. Maybe. I was just going now. Send my love to Alice and Ina. You are a wicked man, and you have wormed your way into the hearts of thousands of children through your dreadful book. If I had my way, I would burn every single copy. No. If you start there, where will you stop? Let everyone else make up their own mind about me, and let's leave it at that. Goodbye, Mr. Dodgson. Mrs. Little. The cheek of the man. He asked me to send his love on to my daughters. And will you? Certainly not. I didn't pass on Alice's love to him, and she expressly asked me to if he were at this party. No, Mr. Dodgson doesn't understand love. What he calls love is nothing more than fantasy, dangerous and counterfeit, criminal. Told people about me. I've had police round my house. I'm suspended from school. My parents have gone ape. It's all your fault. No, Tom, you did this. When he's spoken out to you, everyone knows exactly what type of boy you are. But if I'm so bad, what's to stop me from hurting you now? There's no one around. There's no 
I'm gonna get done, I might as well get done for the real thing. Because nothing happened, Grace. Nothing! Oh, just back off, Tom! Don't make it worse. Worse? How can this get any worse? My life is over. I'm gonna be a sex offender. Do you know what that means? I'm dead. And it's all your fault! It's not her fault! Every woman's fight. Why should we have to put up with people like you? You could have destroyed Grace, meaning God knows how many others, but they stopped you. This isn't over yet. I think it is. You'll be arrested, you'll be charged, and you will go to prison. It's reality, Tom. Just keep on. Not so tough now. Oh, you didn't think I came alone? Go home, Tom. Get help because you clearly need it. There's nothing you can do that can hurt any of us anymore. Just go. Well done, Grace. Yeah. Well done. Thanks, Alison. Not where it started you. That's it. It's all about you. I wonder if there is another me beyond the looking glass. A kinder me, a more truthful me, a wickeder me. We are all legion, as the scripture so poetically puts it. Demons wrestle for control of our souls. Sometimes I win. Often I win. Sometimes I... I have lost Alice. And no amount of sequels will bring her back. All I have now are her photos. The memories. cannot even hear her voice anymore. She was like God's gift, a reminder, a challenge, a, a dream. I am famous now, known the world over. Children write to me. They send me letters. Some offer to pose. They're not her. They never will be. Even if they pretend. And what will history make of me? Will I be damned or praised? <coughs> will people <coughs> smile or shake their fist. I will never know. But I think I care. I would hate it if I... No. Nothing matters. Nothing matters anymore. <coughs> so, we're going to have the whole production, despite everything? Yes. No direct lines, no thinking of it. And uh, you're still wear those shoes? You know what you do? Yes, I wear her shoes, but I'm not Alice Tyler. <coughs> I don't keep my secrets. I find you told the truth. I know you're not Alice, and I never thought you were. A little bit. Um, do you remember that conversation? Yes, 
I remember. Look, it's still too soon. I don't know if I'll ever be able to talk to such a living man. Love anyone. But can we leave it? For now? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I'm being sensitive. <coughs> Rehearsals in 15 minutes, okay? Tyler, do you know your line? Sure, word booker. And all your cues? Yep. Got the answer you're looking for. <coughs> Come on, you need more practice. Say goodbye to Tyler, friend. You did. Bye, Tyler. Rehearsals in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. We're going for a coffee before rehearsals. We just wanted to know if you wanted to come with us. I'm right. Yeah. Give me five minutes. I'm waiting for you. Told. Well, it's no longer a secret. It's going to be a trial press. It's going to be hard. Do you think I should go to court? Well, possibly, I don't know. Don't know if I can face him. Of course you can. You're strong. You have heart. And when the time comes, you'll do it. You have your family, your, your friends. You have me. I guess. Don't you think it's weird? While I've been going through all of this, I've been doing Alistair Pay. I feel like Alistair Southway did the same thing. I mean, she did nothing. She got away with it. I don't know what he did. I think he was completely destroyed by it all. Good. I hope he was. But Mr. Harvey hasn't got away with it. Thanks to you. He remains in. I'm so proud of you. I am not Alice. 